Let's start out talking about griefing in League of Legends, right? <laughs> Alright, let's, okay. let's, let's do it. Let's Every, everyone who's ever played a game have encountered AFKers, uh, Leavers, Griefers, you, you, you know all the terms, yeah, right? Yeah. It must be kind of almost the hardest thing to deal with in an esports game like that, and everyone who has had the experience of playing with one of these people hates it. Yeah. So, so what can possibly be done about it that's not being done right now? That's a great question. Uh, I'm not too close to like our player behavior team who manages a lot of uh, of those things, but um, I mean, personally, I think uh, it's not always the best to just ban people because if you ban people, they just make a new account and then jump back on and start doing even more stuff. So uh, at least like isolating or, 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 or showing, putting those uh, people into a place where they're playing with other people. I mean, there, there's there are some there's some challenges and there's some obstacles there. I will acknowledge that griefing is uh, is a rough part of playing League of Legends, and we we it is definitely on our radar. Something that we continue to address and continues to challenge us. Um, and we're we're always looking at ways to improve the quality of play for all of our players, which means uh, hopefully getting a. Uh, a solution or at least uh, some things to help contribute to, to bettering the experience against griefing. Yeah, and no, it also must be like a, a bane of especially a game like League of Legends because it's so based on team play. I mean, yeah. oftentimes if there's only one player who's not living up to the rest of the team, you lose, right? Yeah, absolutely. It only takes one player to, to like even intentionally feed, which can like ruin your experience. I mean, I have won some games where like it's essentially 4v6 where the dude's like helping yeah. out. Uh, it does happen, but yeah, it just it makes for a bad experience of play overall, and it's something that we, you know, we are concerned about. Okay, so let's move on to something more positive. Um, League of Legends, from my perspective at least, has introduced esports and and the whole idea of team play, like uh, cooperative team play, to a lot more people than any games I have ever tried before or seen before. Why is that? And I know it's a broad question, but. Yeah. Well, what do you think is the key components of, of what League of Legends does right? Um, I, I think it's a combination of a lot of different things. I think uh, at, at, at the core, it, it's just a really strong game. And uh, it feels good when you play the game and you get a bunch of kills. Uh, so there, there's that aspect. So the game is just good in general. But then there's this other element of like competition that is inherent to the game. And, and that's why I think eSports is so successful. But it tr really trickles down to to like all the way down to my tier, which is silver, you know, the bronze yeah. players as well, is uh, is that they want to get better and they want to achieve. And and the big element, a big part of that is you need to play as a team. And, and so based on their, their their personal goals of trying to improve in the game, like you just become a better team player. And, and I think, uh, so being like solo queue is a good example yeah. of like these guys that want with individual skill still needing to incorporate team elements so it's a necessity in the game and you just can't avoid it so i think like because it's so core that people just inherently pick up team play and that element but that that you say inherently pick up team play i mean that's like unheard of <laughs> for games because mo most games today are either you just, just pure deathmatch or i mean anything that requires just a bit more team play, a bit more skill, actually forcing people to work together is kind of a strange thing in, in video games. Yeah. And, and League of Legends seems to be doing it pretty seamlessly. Well, I mean, for every bad game that you have, you have a good game as well. And that feeling of working with a team, and you know, you're at the end of the game and you've dominated and you feel great, and you're in your post-game chat and you're chatting with everybody and you're honoring your, your teammates, and you're like, wow, we did a really good job. It was a close game and we pulled it out. Like that camaraderie that you've built with people that you don't even know is so rewarding. And I think it's that reward of that camaraderie that really drives people to continue to play and continue to be part of that team element. I, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, but normal players like me, for instance, <laughs> who want to go pro have yeah. a pretty straightforward line when playing League of Legends. I mean, I know what it takes for me to do possibly become a pro player, it's never going to happen. But I know what it takes. <laughs> At least takes. you're honest about yeah, it. That's yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, but but, but that, this clear, straight line, has that been like a main design focus for you guys? Like, it's, it, it's pretty simple. The rules are straightforward. You just need to get better and play and play and play. And you can actually see how you're going to advance in the game. 
Yeah, I mean, we, we want to have clear indicators of growth and uh, uh, of growth and play. Like, that's really important. I think the ladder system really really does that well. It's like you're, you're at this level, so that means you're better than this percentage of people and that, and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I sort of forgot your question, um, but <laughs> I lost track. But I, I think the latter element of the game really, really adheres to that and helps with that. Yeah, feed, feeding into that, um, going from from just normal matches, solo matches, maybe in team matches to rank play. Yeah. Which is a kind of serious part of, of, of League of Legends, of course. Doesn't seem like the huge step in it, it oftentimes seems to be in other games. I mean, when you choose rank play, you kind of admit to yourself, yeah, I actually want to test my medal against other players in like a serious yeah. form. Um, again, how, how do you implement that without making it seem punishing for the players, mm -hmm. for new players? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, when, when you look at League of Legends and the way that the matchmaking system works for both ranked and normals, it, it varies quite differently from other games. Um, because you, in, in, in like StarCraft, for example, when you matchmake, you, uh, it's, there's only ranked play, essentially. And if you want to play unranked play, you have to go to custom games, and it actually doesn't have a matchmaking component behind it. So when you look at this, and you're looking at uh, normal games and ranked games, like, and, and you saw in the presentation earlier, and, and, and it's starting to get leaked out, that 23% of players play ranked, right? So that means that the m vast majority of our player base doesn't play ranked, they play normals, and the matchmaking system helps them to still like uh, get matched against people that are of equal skill. So I think that is a really key element to help aiding in that. Um, I asked about this before the press presentation, but I'm going to ask you as well. Um, League of Legends is already big, pretty big, also when, when it comes to sponsor money and yeah. so forth. And we just saw you guys announce a pretty big new uh, uh, sponsor deal today yeah. with uh, Coke. Yeah. Um, do you have any fears as regards to players changing teams or some of the other problems we've seen in, in, in normal sports where the money gets too big, the ego sometimes gets too big, and, and it causes a whole lot of chaos that actually afflicts the game itself? Is that something that you guys plan for, or do you just take it as it comes? Uh, I, I think we're pretty early in our yeah. like professional atmosphere, like uh, so it's hard to, to worry about like like imagining a, 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 an ecosystem in League of Legends where it's like there's too much money and that people are getting paid too much. Like I can't even like comprehend that. Um, but I mean, we're always thinking of things like that. We, we, we take a lot of the elements of our esports and our design philosophy and our and our overall strategy from traditional sports. Uh, and with the good comes the bad, right? So you, you as you follow that, you you also inherit some of the things that uh, are not necessarily positive about traditional sports. Like like what? Well, I'm in just in the fact like the ego side of things and like this too much money element. Um, while we don't have to worry about that now, that's something that might be on the horizon that we might need to take into account. So. Uh, it, it's on our radar for sure. Okay, so um, just the way this this game has evolved, like it is the closest thing we've come to a proper sport when it comes to esports right now. And for years we have heard about esports going to be someday on the same in the same league as proper sports. How, how do you go forward from here? I mean, I can of course imagine it getting even bigger, but but what would you like to see the next step be? Um, like uh, proper TV coverage or? I, I think we're in a good place with coverage. I think the diversity of, of broadcast avenues with like Azubu and Twitch and YouTube and all of these things really help contribute to um, like a lot of accessibility, which I think is important. Um, it's a really good question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and I'm sorry, just to repeat, it's what we were what, what would you what would you like to see the next step be for for league of legends as it regards to to uh, esports how, how does it get bigger from here i i would like to see uh, more sub pro level play i think right now it's pretty ambiguous in terms of the level of like challenger and we are working to remedy that i just think right now when you when you get kit, like when you get relegated out of the lcs there isn't really a place for you to go and your the storyline of your team sort of just stops and that's actually not not the most positive of things for the ecosystem as a whole so i, I think like the sub lcs level of play really needs to get stepped up a bit uh, and it would be better for the ecosystem as a whole and in terms of like broadcast um, I, I really think we're in a good place and um, just helping to to help 
fans engage deeper beyond just sitting and watching, whether it's like Twitter interaction or, or some way to interact with what they're watching, I think would be a, a cool thing uh, that could help in improve the experience. And lastly, since I thought I was the only player to do so in the world, can you please explain that Canon can actually be played <laughs> as an AD? I play AD Canon all the time. Uh, Gambit Gaming, uh, formerly Moscow 5, played it all the time. He, uh, he has CC, he has a good auto attack, right. good base AD, um, and he should be a mainstay AD carry. I, I said it for you. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you.